Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new video for the Machine Quilting Block Party. Today I want to share the second step to quilt as you go. How we're going to bind our blocks together to create our finished quilt. So here's what you're going to need to connect your quilted pieces together. You're going to need your binding strips all prepped up and ready to go, and you're going to need your pieces that have the victory lap stitched and been trimmed down. And here's a tip. Make sure to wait until the very last minute, right before you're connecting things together to trim down, because you can see it's already starting to ravel and fray a bit here on the edge. This just naturally happens, you know, just in the hustle and bustle of trying to get this video shot, this edge has already become a little frayed. So watch out for that. Only trim down your pieces when you're just about ready to start putting them together. So I'm going to set my sashing piece aside. This is the first piece that I'm going to start working on. It's a cornerstone square. And here's the layer, the stack you need to create to take to your machine. We're going to take a piece, a one inch back binding, and this is face up. We're going to place the square face up on top and we're going to align this right edge. And then I'm going to take this folded binding. This is the folded front binding. And here I have the raw edges and here I have the fold. I'm setting this on top so that the raw edges are lined up to the right. So that's all stacked up together. I'm going to take this to machine and we're going to stitch through this with a quarter inch seam allowance. So here at the machine I'm just making sure that that back binding is perfectly lined up with the edge of that cornerstone square and the top binding is lined up too. I'm going to slide it right underneath my foot and stitch on down. As I stitch through this, and I'm using just my regular patchwork foot because we've done that reinforcing stitching, that victory lap is nice and flat. So I feel like I can use my regular quarter inch patchwork foot for this. And as I stitch down, I'm gonna flip up the pieces just like this to check that they're nicely aligned. This is one of those techniques that you wanna make sure you're piecing accurately. If you're not working with an exact quarter inch seam allowance, it kind of throws the whole thing off. This is definitely one of those very precise quilting things. You need to make sure that you're taking away exactly a quarter of an inch. So every few stitches, I'll just flip it up, make sure everything's nicely aligned. Stitch a few, you know, maybe an inch or two at a time and then line things up again and stitch on down. So if you, uh, if you don't feel like you're comfortable stitching this with a piecing foot, with a patchwork foot like this, you could also use your walking foot. That would be fine too. Uh, many machines now have an integrated dual feed. That would also be an option for you as well. But you can see with that victory lap stitching, it really does stabilize that edge and make this go together really quick. So once you stitch off the end, you're going to stitch straight onto a scrap charger. That means the machine's going to be in a nice situation for the next pieces. And I do want to point out, this binding is going to extend beyond the top and bottom of the block. That's intentional. It just makes the whole thing go together easier. So here you can see this is binding nicely stitched to the right edge. The next step is to fold over that back binding and give it a good crease. We want this to be really firmly creased and all of the fabric that can shift over and fold over is folded over nicely. So uh, one tip, I had a few quilters ask me about finger pressing and how I use my fingernails a lot. If your fingernails are real brittle and prone to breaking, you can always just grab something like, this is just a seam gauge, and I'm just running it right along that seam, just making sure that that fold is nice and flat. There we go. So that looks good. Now I'm going to flip it to the right side and I'm going to grab the next piece in my row and it's the sashing rectangle. I'm going to take that rectangle and flip it over. So now I'm going to top it with my cornerstone square and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the right edge of the sashing rectangle with the raw edge of the back binding. Only the back binding, we're not messing with the front binding. So I'm gonna stack this together and I'm gonna make sure that the top and bottom edges are in nice alignment and that right side is in nice alignment. We're gonna take it to the machine, we're gonna stitch through it again. Nice, accurate quarter inch seam allowance. 
So I'm just making sure that the tops of these pieces are in nice alignment along with this edge. Slip it underneath the foot, start stitching. Another thing that I might have forgot to mention is stitch length. You want to lower your stitch length to 1.5 millimeters so that way these pieces come together really nice and tight and the stitches are nice and small. Uh, this is what is holding the quilt together, these binding strips and these lines of stitching. So it's really important to use a nice tight, dense stitch length. Now, as I come to the end, I'm double checking a couple things. I'm making sure that these edges down here are in nice alignment. I'm making sure that that binding is in nice alignment too. It's not winging out or doing anything weird. I want it to stay right along the edge of that sashing rectangle. I'll stitch right onto a scrap charger and then we'll check out our stitching. With that seam stitched, I'm just gonna unfold those pieces so they're nice and straight and run my finger along those seam allowances and that just encourages them to lay down in the groove created by this back binding. Isn't that cool? I think this looks so cool on the front and the back of the quilt. Now, if you find that this doesn't nest nicely in the middle, uh, you can take some scissors and trim it down and get that to nest nicely. Uh, it is one of those things that if it doesn't fit, then that means your seam allowance might be a little too big, meaning that you have too much space in here uh, and too much fabric being taken up. So keep that in mind. And as you start putting your pieces together, you can be improving your seam allowance at the same time. So now the next step is to encase and hide these seam allowances because it kind of looks bad. And that's what we do with our front binding. So here you can see I'm just folding that over and again, I'm gonna run my fingernail along that fold. And you know, if you need to, grab a tool, make it easy for yourself. And so what this is doing is this is encouraging the fabric to fold over completely. And this fold, where we had the folded binding, should be able to reach that line of stitching that connected the cornerstone to the sashing rectangle. So it should be able to reach. And now you have a few different choices. You can finish this completely seamlessly so it looks just as good on the front as it does on the back. And how to do that would be to stitch this down by hand. So you take tiny little stitches, a little stitch onto that fold, a little stitch onto the sashing square, back and forth all the way down, kind of like an applique stitch, and that's definitely open to you. Another option is to do this on your machine, and that's the way I prefer. It's just faster and it's much easier. So we're gonna take this to machine, we're gonna fold this over, and we're gonna stitch about an eighth of an inch from that folded edge and then I'm also going to stitch an eighth of an inch from the opposite side just to give it a nicely finished look. It's kind of like the top stitching on your jeans. So let's take it to the machine. I'll show you how to do that next. So I'm here at the machine and I'm just again making sure that that's folded over completely to encase those seam allowances. If you can see that little line of stitching is my goal. I want that fold to reach that line of stitching exactly. And I wanna stitch about an eighth of an inch inside of that fold. Now, a couple different feet that could be helpful here, an edge stitching foot, of course, will be very, very helpful. I'm using, again, my quarter inch patchwork foot because I have a little groove here that's real handy and I'm able to line up with that and it just gives me that perfect spacing but edge stitching foot would certainly work great too. If you wanted to experiment with some decorative threads and some decorative stitching, that's definitely open to you as well. You could put on uh, an open toe applique foot and you could do some really cute decorative stitching. Well, one year I did uh, kind of a flower, like a sunburst pattern. Now the one thing to keep in mind, anytime that you do a decorative stitch, you know, obviously it's multiple passes over an area, it can get really time consuming. So just a warning, make sure to uh, anticipate that and understand that if you add decorative stitching here, it's gonna definitely double or triple your amount of time stitching all these seams down. Now we only have to stitch along this edge just to secure that binding and make sure that it doesn't flip up. 
but I really think that it looks good to stitch along the opposite side too. It also is another layer of thread going into the quilt and securing it together. And I think it just looks nice because it's that kind of top stitched effect. We stitched along one edge, we might as well stitch along the opposite edge. And I think it gives a really nice finish. The nice thing too is you can put your foot down and go pretty fast with this stitching because this is already secured. It's not going anywhere. It's not gonna wiggle wobble out of shape. So once you get that stitched, go right back onto your scrap charger and let's check it out on the front and back of the quilt. So this is the question I'm always asked about this quilt as you go technique. It looks great on the front, but how does it look on the back? And so here you can see if everything has worked out right, if uh, your math is right and you've taken away exactly quarter inch seam allowances, then you can see that line of stitching from the front is going to land exactly on that back binding on the back. So this is gonna look just as good on the front as it does on the back of the quilt. Once you get that stitching finished, you're just gonna trim off the excess binding to the top and bottom, so that way you form your nice row. And you're gonna just continue to add more pieces just exactly like this. So you're gonna attach cornerstone to sashing and then to another cornerstone using this exact same binding method every single time. And then once you finish your sashing and cornerstone rows, you're gonna do the exact same thing with your block and sashing rows. So here you can see this is block number one. I've already attached it to the sashing rectangle. I've already finished those seams and it looks great. It looks great on the front and it looks great on the back. So this is gonna be such a cool technique to put together with your quilt. Now, once you have your rows created, you're gonna create uh, sashing and block rows and also sashing and cornerstone rows then the next step will be to put those rows together. So you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're gonna add your front and back binding. You're gonna stitch that on one row. You're gonna flip it over, stitch it onto the next row. And the only additional thing is as you are lining up these rows, just be, able, just be sure to pin where these binding strips come together. Pin that and as you stitch it, be careful to match those up and your quilt will go together beautifully. So that's it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed learning how to quilt as you go with me today. If you have any questions about this process, definitely ask in the comments below. I really wanna make sure you know how to use this technique to create many beautiful quilts. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel on YouTube so you don't miss out on any new videos coming out every week. Until next time, let's go quilt. So let's get started learning how to make our quilt together. No, that's just not good. That's just not good. I think I'll just start talking like a me bar. <laughs> I think that'll be really interesting. Hi, my clothing friend. <laughs> Sorry, that cracks me up. Hello, my clothing friend. Leah, they have. <laughs> thinking about it again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> One more time. Okay. <laughs> Click. Hello. <laughs> this is epic fail. All right. Here we go. friends. Leah Day here with a new video. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to watch myself. I'm not. Okay, going to turn that off. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Alright. Click. Hello, my quilting friends.